printing money is bad, mm -hmm. right? It's inflationary. Mm -hmm. uh, but borrowing printed money is insane. <laughs> this idea of this thing is going to keep going until they run out of zeros, you may be... You may be Nostradamus in this thing, Andrew Goss, because I saw an article here a couple days ago. Global debt hits a new record high of 200. Two, hello, two, you're sitting down, $217 trillion global debt. $217 trillion people yeah. owe to somebody else. That's right. Boy, is that a, that's just not a very... Well, you don't want to be somebody else in that environment. You don't just don't want to be somebody else, right? Because what, what happens is, and what is most likely to happen, and this is my running out of zeros comment, mm -hmm. obviously they can't default. They just can't. You can't. Yeah, I, I mean, the whole thing would just... Yeah. yeah. We're not going to pay. That's absurd. Yeah. Especially when we have this wonderful expedient and this endless pile of zeros. So do we need to add more money to the circulatory stream? Well, then that's what we do. And that expedient is so, well, it's just so much better than the alternative, which is a collapse and a, de and a deflationary depression, that it seems to me the only path for these politicians to follow. So if you look at the charts, uh, actually outside the United States is where, where most of it is. Uh, and then the United States is, has a close second, and then China, and then outside of China's areas over there. Um, so just big picture, there's just no way that they're ever going to get real. No. And there's just no way. Right? No. Yeah. Uh, imagine, the, imagine the meeting, right? Uh, you know, the governor or the president, hey, what should we do about the budget, Andy? Oh, goodness, well, you've got to balance the budget. It means you have to slash spending, and you want to start paying down the national debt as soon as possible. So you need to increase taxes, cut services, and then slash budget spending. And out of my office, I go. <laughs> right? I'm out of his office. In comes Mnuchin. No, no. Ignore Andy. Here's what we'll do instead. We'll create about $20 trillion new dollars and just pay everything off with dollars that are worth substantially less than what they were before we did it. And everybody will be happy. You'll be reelected. We don't have to cut anything. In fact, we can even add on this new minimum basic income thing. That only cost us a trillion a year where you give a paycheck to everyone between 18 and 65 just for getting up in the morning. Wow. The, the, the basic idea of um, um, getting something and then paying it off, uh, I guess it's credit. I guess it's been around for a long time, right? I mean, I don't know. Maybe, you know, like... Credit? Yeah, credit. The idea, and if you didn't have it, if you think about it, Nothing would work, really. I mean, how could you buy, how could you buy a home? Who's who can save up two hundred fifty thousand dollars, two hundred thousand? Well, there was a day when houses were bought with cash really? or or private arrangements. You know, they were bought on a note from the seller to the buyer. You know, put down some cash and then I'll pay you a note. That's that's. Oh, but but that was. But uh, it's all private. But the, but that was still debt. Of course, it was yeah, debt. Yeah. yeah. So that's been around with interest. Yeah, exactly. And then the the idea of mobilizing credit, hell, I don't know, five years ago, maybe 10, I talked about uh, my study of the Sumerian clay tokens that they were uncovering there in the desert and making the assumption that uh, we had fiat money all the way back then. <laughs> but I would argue that it was fiduciary money. So when they discovered a clay token with an oxen on it, that meant that there was an oxen on deposit at the <laughs> priest temple, That's great. and that this clay token represented that oxen so they didn't have to walk around the marketplace with it. So this credit was extended essentially, you know, f uh, fiduciary money, right, fractional reserve banking. What if the priest issued two clay tokens and they only had one ox? Or what if the people that bought the ox didn't want to take it back home and just left it in the, in the temple and just took the token home instead, see? So... This credit mobilization actually is ancient Sumerian. It's 5,000 years old. And so it's not something that they just developed over the last 100 years. This they, They've been working on this for five millennia. That's quite a while. I think they've perfected it by now.